Hi there, my name is Robert Hofmeyer. I'm a wildlife cameraman and I'm currently on a three week shoot in northern Botswana. We are camping off grid, so we have uh, no facilities whatsoever. So we need power in order to run our laptops, uh, lights, fridges, and charge our camera batteries. I do already have a Victron dual battery system in my vehicle Barry, as well as in my Metallion Genie X trailer. Uh, these work absolutely fine, but I wanted to compare them to a portable power station. So I asked EcoFlow to send me a Delta II Max. In this video, I'll compare a traditional dual battery system, such as this one, with a portable power station. Um, my use case is overlanding in 4x4, but everything I say should apply as well to motorhomes and campers. First, I'll give a quick overview of both systems, and then I will go over the pros and cons to help you decide which best fits your use case. I'll also provide some tips for faster charging from the vehicle's alternator, discuss how to wire up an EcoFlow power station in a vehicle, and compare the cost of both systems. I must note that EcoFlow did provide me this unit free of charge, um, but they have no say over what I put in this video, and I was the one who approached them after researching all the different power stations available in South Africa. I've also previously recommended an EcoFlow power station to my parents to use during power outages because they can also function as a UPS. Let's look at the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max first. I won't go over all the specs here, but the headlines are a 2 kilowatt LFP battery, good for 3,000 cycles, up to 1,000 watt solar input, 2,300 watt AC charging, 2,400 watt inverter, a couple of 100 watt PD USB-C outputs, and a cigarette socket 12 volt output, as well as some other 12 volt outputs. I'm going to show you the dual battery system in my Metallion trailer since it's easier to see, but it's pretty similar to what I've got in my vehicle. The trailer battery is actually deep down underneath there, so I can't show it to you, but it's exactly the same as the spare battery I have here. It's a 108 amp hour lithium battery. This here is the DC-DC charger, which charges the battery from the alternator of my vehicle when I'm towing. Here I have an MPPT solar controller that charges the battery from the solar panel over there. This here is a Victron MultiPlus. It's a combination inverter and AC charger, but I could just as well have a separate inverter and AC charger. The battery state of charge is monitored via a shunt and shown on this screen here. In the vehicle, I actually have a Victron shunt that I can connect to via Bluetooth so I can see how full the battery is on my phone. And here we have a couple of USB ports and a fuse box to connect everything up. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. I think the biggest advantage for the EcoFlow Delta II Max here is that it's portable. Uh, that means it can be easily moved between the tent and the vehicle or even used at home during a power outage. The power station is easier to install uh, with less wiring than a dual battery system and therefore uh, fewer points of potential failure. One con is that the EcoFlow power station does not have a replaceable internal battery, but you can buy additional batteries that plug in to add to its capacity. Also, EcoFlow claims that the battery will still be at 80% after 3000 cycles, which is a very, very long time, and it comes with a five-year warranty. The biggest downside to a portable power station is that they are not as configurable as a dual battery setup. Have a look here in my vehicle. I've added a uh, 12 volt power, actually 15 volt power to power my camera while it's in use. I've added 12 volt outputs up here. Um, got some cigarette sockets and USB outputs up there to power my GPS and my zoom recorder. Down here between the seats, I've added even more power outputs to charge GoPro batteries and cell phones and things. And over here in the back, I power my fridge from my second battery and behind the driver's seat i've got a whole charging crate where i charge my torches my big v-lock batteries uh, radios and all sorts of other things power stations typically have limited 12 volt outputs so it would be very difficult to power all of these 12 volt accessories but i'll discuss a way around this later in the video one concern with portable power stations is that they are all in one unit so it is theoretically possible for the entire thing to fail whereas with a dual battery system if one component fails you can often continue to function for example maybe your solar charge controller fails you can still continue to uh, power your battery from the vehicle 
Another disadvantage to an all-in-one unit is that you have to buy the entire thing in one go, whereas with a dual battery system you can start out with a basic system and add to it later on. Um, but I'll get to costs later on in the video. In the work I do, my equipment is subject to a lot of heat, dust and bumps. Uh, I've just got the EcoFlow, so I can't really speak about its reliability. My Victron dual battery systems have been absolutely bulletproof over the years. I think if you buy good quality components, your most likely point of failure is in the installation. Maybe uh, under spec cables or a connection coming loose on rough roads. Charging from solar works pretty much the same whether I'm charging a power station or the auxiliary battery in my vehicle or my trailer. The biggest difference when charging a power station or dual battery system is when you plug them in to charge from AC power or when charging from the vehicle's alternator. Dual battery systems usually have decent alternator charging but relatively poor AC charging, whereas power stations often have very good AC charging but quite limited DC or alternator charging. The EcoFlow Delta II Max charges at 2,300 watts when plugged into the wall and charging via AC. That's very, very fast. It can get from 0 to 80% in about an hour. Fast AC charging might not appear to be so useful in an overland vehicle, but it is in fact very convenient. For example, you might pass through a town, stop for lunch, quickly plug in your EcoFlow unit, and by the time you're finished with your meal, it's at 100% but the power station only charges at about 100 watts when plugged into the cigarette socket in the vehicle. This is a problem common to all power stations because they normally use the cigarette socket, which is only uh, 10 amps maximum, which is really not enough. Some people even install a big inverter in their vehicle specifically to charge their power station while they're on the road. <sighs> okay, too much talking. Um, let's take a break and have a look at some wildlife. If you have a look over there, there's an elephant. There's actually a whole herd of elephants over here. They snuck up on us. There's our campsite. I'm staying close to the vehicle because I am on foot. But they do, they pass through here pretty much every single day. A little bit of a head shake. They're so lovely. All right, back to the talking. So this is the vehicle charging cable that comes with the unit. It has a standard cigarette plug at the one end and an XT60i connector on the other end. This will charge up to eight amps, which is pretty slow. But you also, when you buy a solar panel, uh, EcoFlow solar panel, you will get one of these cables, which is a, the same thing, an XT60i on the one end, and these, I think they're MC4 solar connectors on the other end. And these will charge up to uh, 15 amps. So the way that the EcoFlow unit knows that you've plugged in a solar charging cable is that they've connected this extra pin on the XT60i connector to the negative terminal of the plug. Whereas on the vehicle charging cable, the extra pin is connected to the positive terminal. So if you want to have faster charging from a DC source like your vehicle, uh, you can make up a cable that goes from XT60i to whatever your vehicle's output is. In my case, I've added an Anderson plug. Um, I've actually gone Anderson to MC4 and then I used uh, this solar cable from EcoFlow because then this plug is correctly wired with the uh, negative and the additional pin bonded. If you want to charge the unit even faster, you can uh, use the same cable but add a transformer to increase the voltage. Um, it'll cap at 15 amps input, but it can go up to 60 volts. So you can uh, increase the voltage and therefore increase the overall power or wattage going into the unit and it will charge much faster. Another option is to buy two of these solar cables with the correct XT60i connectors on the end and then connect them in parallel to your vehicle's 12 volt system. So I've just used some MC4 splitters to create the parallel connection and then I've used my Anderson to MC4 jumper 
So I plug the Anderson plug into the vehicle. There we go. I can then double the input on the EcoFlow unit to 30 amps without adding a transformer. So this solution is a bit messy at the moment, but obviously you could have a custom cable made up with these two XT60Is just going straight to whatever plug can connect into your vehicle or directly onto the terminals of the battery. Make sure you fuse it. As you can see, I'm getting around 330 watts input into the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max from these two uh, XT60Is, which is pretty close to 30 amps and definitely fast enough for my purposes. One note, if you are gonna go this route and use one or two EcoFlow solar cables and then get an MC4 to Anderson cable, just be aware that the MC4 to Anderson adapters available online are mostly uh, reverse polarity to the one that you need. So you might have to pop these two pins out and swap them around. But by far the best solution for faster alternator charging on an EcoFlow Delta power station is the new EcoFlow alternator charger. I don't have one yet, so I'm going to put a picture of one in this area here. The EcoFlow alternator charger will charge uh, an EcoFlow Delta unit from the vehicle's alternator when the vehicle is running at up to 800 watts. This is more than double the speed of most DC-DC chargers. If you recall, I mentioned earlier that one of the issues with using a power station in an overland setup is powering all your 12 volt and USB accessories. The EcoFlow alternator charger actually offers a solution to this because it provides reverse charging. So what it can do is you can set it up so when your um, vehicle is running, the alternator is providing power, uh, that will charge up your EcoFlow power station. Then when you are stopped, you can set it up so that it reverse charges your starter battery. Then all you need to do is wire up all your 12 volt accessories to your starter battery or use existing plugs and sockets in the vehicle. And when the vehicle is stopped, the EcoFlow alternator charger will actually um, power these accessories and ensure that your starter battery does not go flat. The only risk here is of course uh, there is a possibility that the entire power station will run out of juice and then your starter battery will be drained and you will be stuck. Thankfully there's a setting in the EcoFlow app to set the discharge limit so you can say always retain say 20% of the capacity and shut off the unit before it goes totally dead. That way if you do drain everything uh, you can always then charge your starter battery from the remaining power in the EcoFlow unit and get the vehicle going again. The additional advantage of wiring all your accessories to the starter battery is that when your EcoFlow unit is out of the vehicle, say you're using it at home or something, all your accessories will continue to function. You'll just have to be careful uh, that you don't drain your starter battery. All right, let's talk about cost. It's a bit difficult to ensure that I'm comparing apples to apples, but the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max costs 26,000 Rand, 29,000 if you bundle it with the EcoFlow alternator charger. I'll put links down below to EcoFlow's website. I priced a similar capacity Victron uh, dual battery system and I ended up at around 42,000 Rand, including a bit for installation. Um, so a Victron dual battery system is definitely quite a bit more expensive than the equivalent EcoFlow power station. So in conclusion, I think that power station technology has reached a point where it can compete with traditional dual battery systems and it's cheaper. So if I were kitting out a vehicle today, I would, I think I would go with a power station rather than a traditional dual battery system. See you next time.